You're listening to To Hatch a Pod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. It's another edition of To Hatch a Pod. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts. That's nice to say now instead of saying coming soon. But we've dropped on several different podcasting platforms. So that's kind of nice for us. And with me today, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello from the city of Tehachapi. Gentlemen, once again, welcome to To Hatch a Pod. Thanks for having us again. And uh, I'm excited to be on uh, on all your various uh, podcast platforms, including <laughs> Spotify, which is the one I use the most. So that's awesome. It is, it is nice uh, that we're, we're available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, on the, now back right to business. Let's jump right into it. It's, it's, we're still amidst this coronavirus. It, it's, you know, where the anticipation has been slow and building. We can feel it here in Tehachapi, even though it's, it's really concentrated in other parts of the country, but it's, it's starting to work its, itself this way. We've got things that we need to talk about. You know, the social distancing goes on. We're in three different locations as we record this. And I know that you, Greg, were involved in some teleconferences, and the health department really wanted to, to push some messaging out. That's right, Key. So uh, I think I mentioned before, we have a great relationship with the county of Kern, and specifically uh, Matt Constantine, the director of uh, public health. And uh, we have a conference call every morning with, with Matt in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, he shares data with us, and uh, we work with him hand in hand. But he talked, uh, I interviewed him and recorded it, and I think we're going to play it here in a second, but the importance of social distancing so that we can flatten this curve. We keep hearing this, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. What does that mean? Well, if we can, if we can kind of avoid each other for now, and then we could, we could embrace each other later. Uh, but he had, a, he had a great take on it. So if you want to roll that tape now, it might be, might be a good segue. Let's go to it. I'm here today with uh, Matt Constantine, Director of Kern County Public Health. And Matt had a few words for us to say so that we can continue to be safe within this pandemic. Greg, it's really important for the public, for our community, to recognize the importance of heeding the governor's advice and the science behind social distancing. And what we mean by that is to create distance between you and somebody else that potentially could be infectious. And these are good messages to remember even during flu season. So keeping a distance of six foot or greater at all times, um, not shaking hands, washing your hands often after you touch surfaces, doorknobs and gas pumps is helpful. Reducing your exposure by perhaps limiting the time you go to stores or limiting time the number of times you go to a store. And to just really reduce uh, the number of times you need to go out. Um, this is a good time for us as family members and, and communities to stay home and enjoy uh, our home life for now. And then hopefully this will help What they keep saying is flattening the curve. Thank you very much, Matt. That sounds like some great advice. Keep keep up the good work, you and your team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Greg, great conversation with Matt. You know, it's that's important that we understand the social distancing, even though we're not seeing huge outbreak here in Kern County at the time we're recording this. It doesn't mean that it, it couldn't be around the corner. So why not do everything we can to avoid that? That's right. And Matt and his team are doing a stellar job, as I mentioned, I think, many times before, too. But You know, data is our friend at this point. We need to understand what's happening with this virus, where it's going, you know, the the hot spots so that we can we can just continue to push it back, push it back, push it back and get our lives back to normal here really soon. Sooner than later, right? If we would all just participate and do the right thing. You know, especially with the president, uh, President Trump talking about April 30th as a as a new target date to maintain this this distancing. It's uh, it kind of hits home, you know, being two weeks into it. And then looking at potentially another four weeks, you know, it's definitely doable. It's it's a mindset that you have to get. You've got to change, I guess, your habits from from what right. you're nor- used I think to if doing. You just hunker down, and everybody just hunkers down and gets it done. And you know, we've got some economic turmoil. That's for sure. I don't want to I don't want to poo poo that in any way. But certainly, man, if you've got projects at home, take advantage of this time and, and get some things done. And and call your call your mom and dad that might live across the country and you know, start checking some boxes and. Take a deep breath and just check some boxes and and do some things that you would not normally have done before within your hectic life, right? It's a time to slow down. It's been good to see that people have finally really, uh, again, I think the governor was right when he talked about social pressure sort of being the driving factor for social distancing and and businesses either either closing or, or people just not going out as much. 
I think certainly, I mean, hats off to the people in Tatchby. I mean, we haven't had to, you know, I know other cities are dealing with businesses that won't close or large gatherings and stuff. And like, we haven't had to deal with that. I mean, it's awesome. I think our people have said, you know what, we're going to, you know, the, the, the more we do this, the less long we have to do this, you know? So it's been good to see that. I think the folks have been very cooperative. It's been awesome. Yeah. And the, com- and the community groups that are stepping up that to Hatchby humanitarian relief group, I mean, I keep seeing that they're delivering packages to the senior center for the uh, for numerous seniors, just so they don't have to go out and expose themselves. I think it's it's about community. Um, we talked about it in previous podcasts, but it's so true. Neighbor helping neighbor, community helping community, and that's the way we get through this. That's right. Yeah, I think I think we've got a great opportunity here um, to connect with some folks as well. I mean, just being out, like I said, those new groups and people are. are are figuring out ways to, to reconnect with neighbors they haven't necessarily talked to. I know I've been one of those. I have an elderly neighbor across the street and try to help her out with things here and there. So I think the sense of community is being built just in this kind of trying time. There's always a silver lining, and, and this might be it, actually, that we're reconnecting with each other, friends, family, neighbors, you know, uh, getting to know each other because at the end of the day, it's all about people, right? Yeah. You know, we had a, a blood drive today. Um, when, the day that we're recording this, and it it had filled up two days prior the signups, and they brought up two buses, twice the personnel Houchin did, and we ran one last week, and all of a sudden, boom, it filled up last week, so we did it again. This filled up two days before. The community is turning out to help at different levels, and I guess if if you're at home, and we can guarantee you the social distancing, that's another way to be a part of the community because there's such a need for blood. Uh, at our hospitals. Yeah, everybody's stepped up. Houchin stepped up. I know Christina Scrivener, she was, used to be with Houchin. She's a city council member now. She's got a big connection working at the hospital, and it's just it's so seamless when, uh, when Adventist Hospital, the city of Tehachapi, and uh, Tehachapi Valley Recreation Parks District all collaborate well together and just get it done. You know, I've got a little bit of sound that she actually, uh, Christina Scribner was was at the blood drive. She she gave her seventh gallon since she's been donating blood. She Seven told me, gallons of blood? How long did it take to get? How years does that take? I just oh, finally Lord. got my little keychain for my first gallon. Yeah. Like, I finally got my little keychain. Now it's and that took me years. Yes. You know, I, I see those license plate frames, you know, like the five gallon club and this and that. And the other day, I heard that they were giving away a, a roll of toilet paper or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hey, but uh, you know you don't you don't need to get anything to give blood, right? You're giving life. That's what you're giving. Right. You don't need anything. You're giving life. Well, let's let's check in with Christina. She shot us a, a little bit of uh, told us what it was like at the event. So let's let's check in with what Christina felt. Good morning. I'm out here at Houchin Blood Bank, getting ready to donate blood. I'm here with uh, two buses. We've got this new red bus out, ready to go, and our former bus that you've seen many, many times. Lots of folks lining up to donate. Uh, we're all full for the day and so excited about that. I want to thank uh, Key Budge of the city and Corey Torres at Hatchby Valley Parks and, and Recreation District for saying yes to a blood drive. So if you're well and healthy and not in a high-risk age group, please consider donating blood as that is an ongoing need throughout this crisis. Thanks so much and have a great day. Once again, the community steps up. We say it every time uh, we're scheduling another blood drive in the next week or two. So we'll have more information on that on our website and social media. So folks, if you didn't get a chance to give blood or it wasn't your time yet, you'll have that opportunity because we've committed to Houchin to do it again. They're bringing up two buses at a time so we can maintain social distancing. What we talked about earlier, making sure there is space between you and other people that's in a parking lot so you can stay in your car if you're comfortable. So those are some of the things that we'll be doing here in the coming weeks. Now, Corey, I know you got a chance to participate in some other teleconferencing. That's the way we're kind of doing business now. And before we went on the air, you were talking about, you know, the economy and some interesting comments. And uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you uh, dealt with today, you know, in your telemeetings. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting emergency because this is the first, I mean, this is an economic emergency. Usually the, the results of an, in, uh, of, a, of an emergency have an economic impact. And so therefore the economy kind of comes into play Secondary. Well, this is different because this really, because of the health guidelines, has become an economic uh, disaster, so to speak. And so that's changed the way that the Small Business Administration, that's why they're at the forefront of all this. 
with loans and stuff for a small business and more on that in a second. But yeah, Chris Thornburg is, is with Beacon Economics. And I can't say enough about Beacon because here's the deal with Beacon. And they brag this too. They don't work for the Wall Street Journal. They don't work for Fox News. They don't work for CNN. They don't work for a media company who likes to have maybe their spin on the economy for po- political reasons. So everything Beacon says, let me tell you, usually comes true because they're not a talking head organization. They are actual economists that sit down and look at the data. And Chris Thornburg is, I mean, this guy is, might as well be the Yoda of the economy. He's, he's amazing and super smart and has great things to say. So he was on this conference call with Khaled uh, this morning that I was a part of. And he points out really what's the going to be the impact of the economy. He said, first of all, we don't know because most of the data we have is anecdotal. Uh, the numbers we have seen, like last week, 3 million people filed for unemployment benefits. And, of course, everybody went, oh, my goodness, this is the largest one since the Great Depression. The sky's falling. And he said, look, the numbers that are going to come out in the next few weeks are going to be jarring. But – Unlike what talking heads might say, oh, this is going to be worse than the Great Recession, you know, he makes a good point. The second that these health care guidelines are lifted off of business, those jobs are going to come back. A lot of them are going to come back. Not all of them. There will be some that are lost, unfortunately, because there are businesses and even households out there that are already stressed. Even in a good economy, they were stressed. And this is the last little piece that they really, unfortunately, put them under. But most of those jobs are going to come back because the economy was in such a great place when we had this all of a sudden pause hit, you know, hit on us. So that was the, the point he brought up. And there's going to be a big reduction in, of course, uh, you know, the, the domestic product and gross domestic product, that kind of stuff. It's going to go down probably 8 to 10 percent was his, react, his estimate in the second quarter. But he said, look, third quarter, fourth quarter of this year, it's going to be right back up. If we can get through this in the next month or so. The, the, the economy will rally. The stock market's already shown that a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, second quarter is going to be ugly, but the third and fourth really are expected to be to be, to be be positive. So that was the big thing is really point out that, look, you know, the, the sky isn't falling. It's really a pause right now on the economy, which is weird. And so there is going to be good news to come out of this before it's all said and done. And then a few other folks were involved in that same call, one of them being from the SBA. And we've touted a lot either on our website. We also had our economic development email update go out today with a brand new digital resource guide. So folks can check that out either on our email that goes out. If you're not on it, you can go to our website and access that email with the digital resource guide. And it's got especially those small business administration loans. So if you're looking about that as a small business or even a medium-sized business, because it's pretty open as who can apply. The SBA has Let's just say they were slightly unprepared for the amount of people that would reach out to them when this all first started. Because like I said, usually emergencies, they're like the third wave of relief, not the very first wave. But they've got a thousand customer service reps that they have hired to man the phones 24 hours a day at the SBA hotlines. They also got 500 employees transferred to them from FEMA because again, they're at the front line of the disaster response, the SBA is. And so FEMA is sending them people as well for uh to help with the various deals so they have the and i'm talking about the economic injury disaster loans and great terms i mean they got 3.75 percent on the interest rate and that's payable over 30 years and they'll give you up to two million dollars to help help your your um your business there's also a paycheck a paycheck protection and small business debt relief program is going to come out this week uh, as well and the good news is the Treasury Department is funding these directly. So instead of waiting for the SBA to get the funding and then cut you a check, if you get approved via the SBA, this money is going to come straight from the Treasury Department, which will be quicker than the normal channels of an SBA loan. Wow, that was a mouthful, was it? Not? <laughs> Holy moly, I can't believe you just I've been cooped up for an entire was, week. This is all I'm doing. <laughs> I was watching you read your notes, and you did a good job. So listen. <laughs> When, when the federal government is reallocating FEMA employees to help, because this is not a natural disaster fire, but it's a virus, right? It's a good use of resources. But when the federal government allocates $2.2 trillion, you could never count that high if you had a, you know, a billion lifetimes, I don't think. But $2.2 trillion into the economy, they're already talking about you know, a couple more trillion, if not several more trillion dollars into the economy. I, I view this pandemic as, and, and again, the, the sickness and, and deaths aside, I view it as, you know, Europe takes the summer off every summer. They take the summer off and take holiday, right? Well, the United States is on a spring, a winter spring holiday. 
let's take six weeks off. Let's practice social distancing. And then when this is done, let's get back to work, right? We've taken our holiday and we did some, some projects at home and we, we helped out the cause. We're going to get back to work. I know Tehachapi is going to get back to work here soon. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, Corey, let's let's kind of revisit our website and the resources that we have up there because some people, you know, may not have heard one of our previous podcasts and we talked about it. But you know, you have done a lot of work putting these resources in place. So there's some more tools for not just businesses, but for um, you know the residents and the uh, you know just Joe public. Yeah. So we have obviously the resource page, the COVID nineteen resource page. You click on that. That's going to go with, that's still our restaurant links, you know, who's open. There's online ordering, app ordering, all those links are there. So, again, we're encouraging people to still support the small business and our local restaurants and order takeout meals and all that good stuff. That's there. There's educational links. So, you know, attached to the Unified School District, meal pickup information, but also some good stuff just to help if you're kind of at home, homeschooling your kids. There's a few links for you there as well. And then everything from utility deferments either in the city or even your Southern California gas or your Southern California Edison, that information up there. So it's all tab. So that website continues to get updated. Um, we updated recently with some of the small business administration information uh, and a few restaurant clicks. But also, like I mentioned earlier, the economic development email will be on the website and that, re- that digital resource guide with the, the links for uh, whether you, you, as you a business owner or employer or an employee who may have had your hours reduced and you want to get some of that money back, uh, because the results of this uh, this disaster, um, that's gonna that's available. Very easy to follow. Uh, very easy to click and uh, follow through and get your applications in. Now I saw on uh, Cal State Bakersfield had sent out from their their small business um, program. They've got a webinar coming up, and I think they're going to talk about some of these things. Did you get a chance to see that that email that went out from Cal State? Yeah. I did, yeah, and I've been on a couple in terms of filling out that that paperwork because it is a government form, and so you know if you ever try to do your own taxes, this is what you you get you get dealt with. But no, it, it really you know, there's a few tips and tricks. I think certainly what a lot of people have done. Remember, identity theft was an issue, so a lot of people went out and got LifeLock or whatever those things are, which are great. The problem is when you go to run your credit, you're supposed to unlock them. Well, the SBA is going to run your credit if you apply for this loan, so make sure that you have your life lock turned off or whatever it is, because if they can't run your credit, it's going to be an automatic, um, and it's going to be automatic uh, cancellation or rejection. And they got a, they had a million applications in California alone. And that was last week. So now that the care act was signed, you're looking at probably a lot more. And granted they've got employees that can handle this, but they're going to, you're going to have to really be on your game to make sure you get your money as quick as possible. So some of those tips are out there. And I know, uh, I'm sure with Cal State's webinar, they're going to cover some of that stuff. Uh, Kelly Bearden with the SBDC did a great job last week with a webinar. He presented on it. So little tips like that. And then if your uh, company is owned by multiple people, 20% or more, they need their tax returns ready to be reviewed. Again, it's a, it's a loan. It's a credit application. So they want to have that information. So you want to get that on the ready. And a lot of that stuff's in our, uh, our resources for small business, uh, the COVID-19 resource guide we put out today. Now let's also, let's review what we're doing here at the city level. Some of the things that we can do to offer a little bit of relief and just remind folks as they're starting to settle in and maybe the bills are coming in, what are the, some of the things that we've put together at our level to uh, give a little relief? Well, the first is the, the, the utility payment deferment for your water payments, which if you want to opt into that as a business, the information's on our website. It's on our utilities page on the uh, on the resource uh, guide to go ahead and do that. So we're not gonna charge any late fees the next three months or there's uh, disconnects that all have all been suspended until the end of May. And so that's just a little thing that we can sort of control. That includes your water and your trash payments as well. So uh, that includes uh, includes that too. So those uh, that program is out there. Uh, we don't have a giant pool of money, unfortunately, to, to loan people to get through this hard time, but we think we, gathered a pretty good database of people who do have that money at the federal level to loan you and we're here to help i mean like i said i've been i've been cooped up and doing this for the last week and change now i think i can probably fill out a pretty good sba loan form so if anyone has a question feel free to give me a call and i'll talk you through it because i think i'm getting pretty good at it we'll see (laughs) (laughs) 
you know, I know we've been doing some things that we don't normally do and in, in going out and talking about all our local restaurants. We usually let them support themselves do their own marketing, but we've gone out there and tried to share as a resource for people for foods. We've gone out and, and shot some videos and taken photographs out on location and just talking to that industry, knowing that uh, talking to Mono Lujan over the weekend, 60 percent down, you know, just right away, you know, they were out there doing uh, something different, doing the Santa Maria style barbecues. I happened to drive by, shot a video. It was seen 5,000 times in about 24 hours. Um, and he had a line down to Ashby Boulevard on a little impromptu drive through he put in there at the shed. I mean, it, I went there two weeks ago, two Saturdays ago, and I almost got the last of the food because he was almost sold out. And then this past Saturday, there was a line of cars down past, basically to Mojave Street, looking to turn into the shed so you didn't have to get out of your car. It was brilliant. Other restaurants are copying that move and doing that this weekend. There's more plans for that. So I love the fact that they're adapting. It might not be regular business, but I think they're going to keep their head above water. Yeah. And Greg, I know that that's one of those things that you enjoy, how we reinvent ourselves in, in times of need. I'm excited about the new economy. I've talked about that before. You know, we, we, we're entrepreneurs in Tatchby in the United States of America, and we're reinventing ourselves. And, and again, there's a silver lining, and, and we're going to be okay. Let's just get through this short-term effect that we have. I know we continually look at the, look at the way we're doing business, and we're changing and tweaking um, the way we're getting our messaging out or the way we're going to hold public meetings. Those are all things that it, it, it almost changes on a day-to-day -day basis based on what's going on at, you know, in the world. And it's... For me, I just enjoy the fact that we're really embracing technology at our level. And I see us really when I talk to a lot of other communities that we're a little bit ahead of the curve in the way we go about and do our day-to-day -day business. You know, it's, it's, I can only imagine if I were a small business owner in today's business environment. I mean, oh my goodness. I just, you, you may lose your, your life savings. I don't know. But if, but again, you know, as we reinvent ourselves at the business level, at the government level, we are just, we're, we're going to be something that is just, I'm so excited about what we're going to become. It's, we're like a, an insect, a snake shedding its skin, you know, at some point, because bureaucracy is, is being minimized at this point. And that's a really good thing for the American citizen. Love it. Okay, Corey, let's tell the folks, as we start to wrap things up, where uh, we can find the newsletter. Yeah, so uh, at, our, at our website, liveuptohatchby.com, in the news section, it has the economic development update. Uh, March number two, uh, COVID-19 resources. So you click on that, it'll take you to the, uh, the link to see the guide, download that digital guide. The, the links are active, so you don't, you know, it's not just something you got to type the links in your computer. It'll be there. You can click on that, take it to SBA, SBDC, wherever you need to go for some, for some assistance. So that's all going to be on the front page of our website. And then again, everything else, COVID-19 resource related is on that resource page, which can miss big red banner top of the uh, top of the website. Greg, you have anything in closing? Just, uh, just everybody hang in there. That's we it. are going to get together. And remember, you, remember your social distancing. Thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Tehachapod. Key budge, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello. We try to share you information that's going on and impacting our area and region. So we'll catch you at the next episode. Thank you. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at tehachapicityhall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.